Problem 23A, Part 2, Ledgers and Unadjusted Trial Balance. Previously in this problem, we recorded the journal entries for the transactions that happened in April. And what we're going to do is we're now going to transfer the journal entries to the ledger so we can get a final balance for each and every account so we can then build the unadjusted trial balance. So let's take a look at the cash ledger. Cash and accounts receivable are assets, so they have a normal debit balance. The way a ledger is set up for each and every account is that you have a date column, the item column, post reference column, a debit and credit column, and then a balance debit and credit column. The date is for the transaction of the journal entry, item is for a description, and for normal journal entries we do not record a description or an item. Post reference refers to the journal pages that the particular transaction can be found on. The first debit and credit column is for what happened in the actual journal entry for that particular account only. And then the second debit and credit column for the balance is to run a balance for this particular account. So for cash, on April 1st, on journal page number one, we debited cash for $17,000 bringing the balance for cash to 17000 On April 2nd, we credited cash for 3400 on journal page number 1, bringing the balance down to 13600 On April 8th, on journal page 1, we credited the cash account for 2000 bringing the balance to 11600 And for every journal entry that references cash, we will record that line from the journal entry in this ledger. Recording the journal entry, debit and credit, and then showing the running balance for this particular account. So at the end of April, cash had a balance of $18,050. The importance of the ledger is to note every balance for every account after each and every transaction. It's very important to know how much cash you have on hand. Taking a look at accounts receivable, we'll do the same thing. We will record every journal entry that references accounts receivable and have a running balance. It's important to know how much people owe you. We started off with accounts receivable with a debit of 9000 and later on we credited accounts receivable for 7800 So at the end of April, accounts receivable had a balance of 1200 And to be more specific, it had a debit balance of 1200 all asset accounts have a debit balance, except for contra revenue, or I'm sorry, contra asset accounts. Contra asset accounts contradict an asset, and it is actually just the opposite. So for accumulated depreciation and other contra asset accounts, they will actually have a credit balance. And we'll learn more about those accounts in Chapter 3. More assets include supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, and trucks all of which have a normal debit balance and for specific supplies on April 10th on journal page number one it was debited for 1800 and now the balance is 1800 prepaid insurance on April 15th was debited for 1800 and has a debit balance of 1800 equipment on April 6th was debited for $10,000 on journal page number one and now has a balance of 10000 and the truck was debited for 21000 on April 8th, journal page number 1, and now has a debit balance of 21000 You will do this for every single account that is listed in the journal. We are not duplicating the entire journal entry, just the line that belongs to the particular account that you are going to the ledger for. Notes payable is actually a liability, and it has a normal credit balance. So on April 8th, on July, on Journal entry number page one, we credited notes payable for 19000 and now we have a credit balance of 19000 Accounts payable is also a liability, and it has a normal credit balance. So every time we journalize for accounts payable, we record it here, and we keep a running balance of this particular account. So at the end of April, Accounts payable had $8,500. Capital has a normal credit balance. Drawing has a normal debit balance. Every time one of these accounts is listed in the journal, we apply it to the ledger.
the user earns is our revenue account has a normal credit balance. So when we journalize fees earned, we will record the journal entry here for that particular line, and we will keep a running balance. So for April, we earned $22,000 in fees earned, which is basically revenue. Expense accounts have a normal debit balance. Every time we record an expense in the journal, we will apply it to the ledger and keep a running balance so we know exactly how much we spent on each and every expense after every transaction. Now once you are finished with recording the ledgers, you will then take the ending balances and apply them to the normal debit or credit balance that they go with. So cash, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid insurance, equipment, and trucks are all assets that have a normal debit balance. So we will pull this information directly from the ledgers. 18,050 is the cash balance. 1200 is accounts receivable. Supplies has an $1,800 balance. Prepaid insurance has an $1,800 balance. Equipment has a $10,000 balance and truck has a $21,000 balance. We apply this to the debit column because these are normal debit balance accounts. Notes payable and accounts payable and capital are credit balance accounts. We pull these from the final balances of the ledger. Drawing has a normal debit balance. Fees earned has a normal credit balance, and all the expense accounts have a normal debit balance. Once we have brought in and recorded the ending balance for each and every account in the appropriate column they belong in, we then will total these columns to determine if our debit and credit balances equal. In this particular case, we had debit balances of 66500 and credit balances of 66500 If I were completing this accounting work, I would feel very confident that I have done my job correctly with recording transactions because all accounts that have a debit balance are in the debit column and all accounts that have the credit balances are in the credit column and my debits and credits equal. Now the tricky thing about a trial balance is it is to prove debit credit equality. However, it does not show every error that could potentially happen. For instance, if you recorded to the wrong account, that's not an error that you may see on an unadjusted trial balance. So I want you to keep in mind that a trial balance is to prove debit credit equality. It is to check for certain errors. However, it does not reveal every error in accounting. So do not always depend on this trial balance to be your 100% accuracy check. I would say about 98 to 99% sure I've done my job correctly if my trial balance balances. You will go on to Chapter 3 and you will learn about adjusting entries and you will record those adjusting entries and then you will do what's called an adjusted trial balance. And from the adjusted trial balance, you will then create your financial statements. And that will continue in lecture for Chapter 3.